this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can use Excel to create your scatter plots. This is not something that I put in one of the pre-made Excel workbooks. This is something that I want you guys doing from a new workbook. So when you open Excel, you can double click on the blank workbook or you can hit control new or Apple new or whatever it is for your computer to open up a new, a new document. Okay. Then you're going to go ahead and type in your explanatory variable in one column and your response variable in the second column. So I've gone ahead and done that here. So I have the temperatures in the first column and the number of ice cream sales in the second column. So this is from the scatter plot notes that I have for you guys. So working with the same data. And I'm going to go ahead and have Excel create a scatter plot for me of this data set. That way I don't have to do it by hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my data. So I'm going to click on the very first value, 14.2. I'm going to keep holding down and I'm going to drag over and down until I've highlighted all of my data and then I release my mouse. Now I'm going to come up at the top and your top might look a little bit different than mine, but I want to find insert. Okay, I don't want insert at the very, very top. That's different. I just want the insert within Excel. So you have home, insert, draw, page layout. I want insert. And then in about the middle of all of these options here, you've got all these different types of graphs. So I want the one in the bottom row and in the middle, and it looks like a scatter plot. So if you click on that, you'll see different ways that you can create scatters and then they have bubble plots as well. We just want this first scatter. This is a basic scatter plot. That's what we want. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to put the scatter plot in for me. Now when it does this, it assumes that the first column is going to be your X axis and the second column is your Y axis. That's what it assumes. If that is not the case, um, you can always switch the rows and columns. Okay, um, you can change the type of chart that you have if you click on the wrong one. And then there are places where you can add chart elements. So in my version of Excel, it's in the upper left hand corner. Um, you might also have a little plus sign over here just to the right of your chart. I used to have it here and then it updated and now it's not there anymore. It's over here underneath the home button. So underneath this, I want to add some axis titles so that I can label my axes. And that's all I'm gonna add for right now. So then if I come in here I can double click on chart title and I can change this to something more meaningful. Ice cream sales. And maybe this was summer of 2019. I don't actually know when this was. I'm making up when this was. And then down here, I'm going to change this axis title to temperature. And this was in degrees Celsius. And I'm going to change this axis title to be ice cream sales. So that's one thing I can do. Um, another thing I can do is when I look at this, I don't love this big empty space here. And I personally am not super picky about everything has to start at zero. There are some people out there in the world that say your graphs have to start at zero, but then you have this big empty space here. And I'm like, I don't like that big empty space. Okay, it's not showing me what I need to see here. So I'm gonna click on one of the numbers on my horizontal axis, and I'm gonna double click on it. And then it, I already had this open, so if I get rid of this, double click on that, and it opens up this side menu here. So the bounds on this axis, the minimum is zero and the maximum is 30. So I'm gonna change the minimum instead of being zero, I'm gonna change it to 10. 
And now I can see a little bit more about what's happening with my data. Okay, it changed the interval of my data so that I can get a more accurate estimation on where these data points are. And it just looks a lot nicer. I could also change these guys if I wanted to. I don't think I do. I think zero to 700 is okay. Maybe I could start at 100 because there's nothing under 100. I, I'm not super upset about that one, that one starting at zero though. So then another thing that we can do is we can actually have Excel put the line for the linear equation that we find on the graph itself. Now this is something that you cannot do in all versions of Excel. I believe if you are running this through the online version of Excel, it does not do it in there. Um, so you have to have Excel downloaded. Google Sheets did not used to do this, but I heard someone say that they have figured out how to do it, and I just haven't looked into that recently. Um, but this is something that you can also do in Google Sheets. You do not have to necessarily do this in Excel. So if I come back over to my add chart element and I come down to trend line, I'm going to add the linear trend line. We aren't looking at any of these other guys here. I just want the linear trend line. So now it adds this little dotted line along here and that little dotted line is the regression line. So that is the line that fits the equation that we would find for this data. So typically what you would do is you would look at this scatter plot, say, hmm, it looks like there's a linear relationship. Let's go find the equation. And then you would come back and add this trend line. This is not something that you would do right out of the gate. But there you go. You can play around with this some more. Just click around in Excel, okay? Don't be afraid to explore while you're in here. Okay, click around, see what other things you can play with, and just have some fun looking at this graph, changing some things up. But these are some of the minimum things that you guys need to have when you're creating scatter plots in Excel. You've got to have those axis titles, got to have your data. If you're asked for a trend line, you got to make sure you have that trend line. If you aren't asked for the trend line, don't include the trend line or the equation on the on the scatter plot. So if I don't ask you for it, don't include it. Because then this is all I want to see. So there you go. That is how you create a scatter plot in Excel.